in the last video, I talked about hexane and the molecular ion peak and all the fragments <clears throat> and the base peak. I briefly mentioned this peak right there, that small one, and that's called the M plus 1 peak. So that's what we want to discuss today is what is that peak, this M plus 1. Okay, so you see the M plus 1. So in order to analyze the M plus 1 in hexane, let's take a step back and look at the mass spectrum for methane, where it only has one carbon. Okay. Now the quick answer to why we have an M plus 1 peak is due to isotopic effects. Remember that carbon 13, okay, Carbon, sorry, carbon 12 has a relative abundance of like 98.90%. So of all the carbon in on our planet, 98.9% .9 of it is going to be carbon 12. But then there's carbon 13. And carbon 13 has 1.10%. So a very, very small amount of carbon-13. Now what happens is if we had 100 molecules being injected onto the mass spectrum, or onto the mass spec, you would expect that 98.9% .9 of all the methane molecules would be carbon-12. And only 1% of it would be carbon-13. And so that's what we are seeing here is that we have a ratio of nearly 99 to 1. And that's what we're seeing with the, the ratios or, or the what we see on the relative abundance. We can see that this peak right here, the base peak, which is also the molecular ion peak, it's going to be a hundred times larger or near a hundred times larger than the M plus one peak. And that all has to do with rate the uh, ratios there and the relative abundance. Okay. So that's really cool. You can see if you had 100 molecules, 99 of them are going to hit the detector as carbon-12, and only one of them is going to hit the detector as carbon-13. But now when we introduce a molecule with more than just one carbon, the M plus 1 peak gets a little bit more complicated. Okay? But we still see it in hexane here, that little peak right there. That's our M plus 1 peak. There it is. But if you zoom in and look very carefully, you will see that this peak right here, the molecular ion peak, is not 100 times taller than the M plus 1 peak. The ratio is now off. So if I could, okay. So the question is, why is that ratio now? not 99 to 1. It was 99 to 1 with methane. But why is it not 99 to 1 in hexane? Well, it has to do with probability here. We already know the uh, relative abundance of carbon-12 and carbon-13. So let's say if we take 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 molecules. Now, this isn't practical. But let's say if we take five, or five molecules of hexane, right? One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so we have five molecules of hexane. There's a high probability that we're going to have a molecule that hits the detector that has all of the carbons Let's see, you're trying to get this to work here. I'll just write it in red, okay? 
there's a high probability that we will have a lot of the molecules hitting the detector with six carbons, and of those six carbons, each one is a carbon-12. But now there's a probability that this carbon right here on the end could be a carbon-13. And another molecule, hey, carbon-13 may not be on that carbon, but it could be on that carbon. And so forth. So now because you have so many carbons, the probability of you getting a molecule with at least one carbon-13 has just gotten greater. So yes, when we look at the mass spectrum, the majority of our molecules, so if we had 100 hexane molecules, okay, the majority of them are going to be all carbon-12. But now... There's going to be more molecules with a carbon-13 in it somewhere due to there being more carbons. There's a higher probability of getting a carbon-13 in there. And so what, what is that going to do? That's going to mess up this ratio right here. So this ratio for a compound that has more than one carbon will not be a 99 to 1 ratio with those relative heights. Okay. <laughs> I don't know why I was waving my hands. That didn't make any sense. But, okay, does that make sense? I hope it does. Okay. So that's what that si size or that little sentence there is going to, that's the summary sentence. As more carbons are in your molecule, that ratio, the M, the molecular ion peak is going to get a little bit shorter, and the M plus 1 peak is going to get a little bit taller. Okay. Now on this slide here, I have this, con this one right there, an M plus 2. Now M plus 2s appear in molecules that have bromine in them. <coughs> So you can see the diagram here. Here's our M peak and our M plus 2 peak. Now, why are we getting an M plus 2 peak? Because we have an isotope of bromine at 79 and then another isotope of bromine, two atomic mass units larger at 81. So that is why you're going to have a M plus 2 peak due to isotopic effects with respect to bromine. Now notice that these peaks have relatively the same height. Any guess why you think they have the same height? Well, it goes back to relative abundance again. Bromine 79 has a relative abundance of about 50%. And bromine 81 has a relative abundance of about 80% or 50%. So that ratio looks like this. It's a 50 to 50, which can simplify down to a 1 to a one to one ratio. And that's exactly what we see in the bromine compounds. Isn't that so cool? Now this table right here is very informative. Because what if we had... A compound with a chlorine atom. So if we come back here, what if I replaced this bromine with a chlorine? That would change the look of the mass spec. How would it change it? Well, first of all, look at the chlorine isotopes. We have a chlorine 35 and a chlorine 37. So if we have a chlorine atom, we would expect an M peak and an M plus 2, much like the bromine. That's what we would expect. But compare bromine's relative abundance to chlorine's relative abundance. So chlorine's relative abundance is a 75 to near 25, so I'm rounding that up a little bit. Okay. Do you see how that's going to simplify down to a 
three to one. So if you see a mass spectrum that looks like this, you have a peak like this, and then a peak like this, and that is our molecular ion peak, and that smaller one is our M plus two peak, and the ratio here is that there's a ratio of three to one. Do you see how this peak right here is three times larger than that one? If you see that ratio of a three to one and you have an M plus two peak, then you have a high probability and you'll be pretty confident that you do in fact have a chlorine in your molecule. Isn't that cool? So these isotopic effects can help us determine what a molecule looks like because of isotopic effects and relative abundance. The mass spec instrument can detect that difference. Isn't that so neat? So I do want to clarify that oh, with this modified example where we replaced the bromine with the chlorine, the M over Z's would not be the same because look at the sizes there. Bromines are much larger. 79 atomic mass units versus 35. Okay, So I'm not saying that if we had chlorine, it would show up at that M over Z. I'm just saying, hey, you got to notice that the ratios, come back to this, it's going to look something like that. Okay? If, as always, if you have any questions or concerns, please let me know.